Okay, we're going to do the African link here today. Um, what I know the uh, the main thought when the pops into people's heads when we talk about Africa, uh, especially when it comes to U.S. history, we think of the slave trade. But I want you to put that aside for a while because there's many important things that uh, we need to get to before we even get to that. And in fact, don't get hung up on the uh, entire slavery thing. I definitely will cover that. But um, if that's all you think that Africa is about, then you're going to get a lot of questions wrong on a test. So uh, make sure that you get the other information because uh, slavery in this particular part uh, is a really a small chapter of what's going on in Africa. All right, so let's start with the three big sub-Saharan um, uh, empires here. And sub-Saharan, I mean under Sahara. Sub means under. Sahara is this desert right here. And the Sahara Desert is this huge desert that separates northern Africa from southern Africa or central Africa, western Africa, whatever. Northern Africa is over here on the coast and then all this desert area uh, people have to get through in order to get to uh, the West African empires of Ghana, Mali, and Songhai. Now Ghana was over here and it was taken over by Mali pretty much, and then Songhai uh, came into play and gobbled them up. Uh, so these are the three big empires and they existed from uh, three, the 300 to 1600. And the best way that you can remember these names, Ghana, Mali, Songhai. Look at the first three letters, G, M, S, Ghana, Mali, Songhai, Grand Middle School. So the school that you go to is a great way to remember these um, these empires here that we're going to be talking about in Africa. Uh, Ghana got started at 300. That's just a number you're just going to have to remember. Um, Ghana started in 300. Mali took over in uh, 1230. So an easy way to remember that is 1, 2, 3, 0. So that's real easy. And then Songhai is 1450. And the way that you remember that is that you got 1, 2, 3, and then you got one, four, five, zero. So it's really one, two, three, four, five. Is are the numbers that you need to remember when it comes to these dates. I usually don't want you to uh, worry about the dates, and you you really don't. But you have to have a, a good sense of which one is which, which one came first, middle, and last. Uh, GMS helps you uh, figure out that that order. So Ghana came first, Mali second, and then Songhai came after that. All right, so why are we talking about these these countries? First of all, they had a, you know, waterways are very important. So they had the Niger River here, and uh, they're right by the coast. So Portugal was able to come down, and they were really the first ones that the Portuguese met on the way around Africa. Um, you know, there was trade routes that went through, but once they were able to go around uh, by water, they were able to set up a trade route with uh, these empires and Portugal became fairly powerful as a uh, maritime country. They uh, invested a lot in their ships, a lot in their um, uh, navigational tools and everything, and they were immediately rewarded very quickly right over here when they set up this trade route here with the West African empires. Now, what were they trading? We touched on it a couple days ago where the African nations here, their two main commodities are salt and gold, okay? So you can see here that they controlled the trade. Uh, they had salt right here and also gold. Okay, Oops. still not cooperating. All right, so they had gold and salt. Those are two main things. So when a question comes up on the test, says, you know, what are the commodities? Instantly students, and I see this mistake done all the time, they say slavery. Slavery is what they traded. Yes, but that's later. <laughs> that's not why they, they went to Africa. Um, gold and salt were the uh, reasons why everybody wanted to get to Africa and why these African nations controlled the trade. Again, pulling the Europeans, anybody that wanted this gold and salt, had to come to them, and they were very, very powerful. They, they would just wait till people showed up, gave them great stuff, and then they'd give them their gold and their salt uh, in the trade. So uh, they, they became very rich and very powerful because of the gold and salt. Now, why salt? It's on your table. Everybody has it. It's cheap. Not a big deal. Well, for us, it's not particularly a big deal. But back then, it was vital. Um, the, uh, the food had to be preserved. I mean, think about 
um, what creates mold, what, cre what, what spoils food, and that's water getting in there and uh, creating the bacteria and then ruining the food. Well, salt will uh, get rid of the moisture and keep that food from getting spoiled. So they, uh, they needed salt constantly, and Africa was their main supplier for Europe. So they desperately wanted this salt, so they, were able, they had to come to the, uh, the West African empires in order to get that. Um, then, of course, we get to uh, trading of slaves. Now, this is something that you know we're, we're conditioned in here in America to think of slavery as chattel slavery, which is basically what happened, a very brutal form of slavery. But slavery did not always exist like that. When people talk about slaves in uh, you know the 15th century and ancient Roman times, uh, some of these slaves were uh, really servants. Um, you know, if you were to go to ancient Rome and somebody would point, to sla point out a slave to you, you'd be like, that doesn't look like a slave to me. They're not acting like a slave. They're walking around wherever they want. They're buying stuff. They have their own money. Um, slavery, really, and, and some of these, it was more of a soft kind of slavery, but much like what we're going to see with indentured servitude uh, when we talk about the colonies, where people were bound to an employer. They had to work for them. They were not free to go and work for somebody else. They... Um, did make money, they did have certain rights, uh, but they didn't have a right to go and work for somebody else. And back then, it was a sense, almost kind of a, a security of being able to have a job all the time and that somebody was going to uh, pay for your wages and so forth. So it, it's it's very strange for us now. We we don't look at uh, life this way. We you know, Here in America, we believe in freedom and and uh, we got rid of uh, slavery that existed, and it was a very different form of slavery uh, that we see here in America that was going on in much of the world, because much of the world did have slaves. Um, it's only in recent history that we started getting rid of slavery and outlawing it, uh, especially the kind that we had here in America. But after a while, uh, in the 1470s, uh, Portugal had been uh, trading with them, and uh, slaves did come into the picture. Um, but uh, as we'll see later, it wasn't until the, uh, the uh, exploration and uh, why, uh, when everybody starts colonizing the Americas, did slaves become uh, a commodity like what we're going to see in history uh, in the 1600s. It's going to be very, very different. Okay, the other thing that I really want you to remember is that in order to get at this gold and this salt, which are the main, uh, these, these are the big things that Africa trades, not slaves yet, it's gold and salt that they're after. I just want to stress that because so many people get caught up and hung up on this. Uh, in order to get that, they would trade the Africans' metals, cloth, and other manufactured goods. Make sure you you know this, okay? This definitely will be a question on the test. Uh, the, the Europeans would give the Africans metals, cloth, and other manufactured goods, things that they, they built, uh, things that they made, they would bring to Africa, and Africa would give them salt and gold uh, in exchange. So that's very, very important. Make sure you remember um, what the Europeans uh, traded to the Africans and what the Africans, gold and salt, and then later slaves, much later, um, back to the Europeans.